Welcome to FBB Forum. If you like this content, please be sure to follow my Instagram page and subscribe to my YouTube channel. I'm super stoked to welcome the stunning bodybuilder and model Lexa Stahl to the podcast. Lexa is no stranger to FBB fans and is well known for modeling on her biceps, um, OnlyFans, and some other websites as well. Um, Lexa is also working hard to train as a Brazilian jiu-jitsu master. She is a delightful young woman. I'm really um, so pleased to speak with her. And uh, welcome, Lexa. It's great to have you here. Hi, thank you. I'm so glad we finally, I finally got on because I know you've been asking me for a while. So I'm glad that um, I'm finally on. So thank you. Yeah, this worked out good time wise. And I really appreciate your time. And uh, yeah, you're so awesome too. So <laughs> thank you. I try. <laughs> Now, um, in terms of getting started in bodybuilding, I was wondering when you first start, uh, started, did you have kind of an athletic or, or sports background before you started in bodybuilding? I have absolutely like no sports or athletic background, um, which really? you can look at like pros and cons of each because I was able to pretty much like start bodybuilding and kind of mold my body however I wanted. Mm -hmm. um, so I never really played sports growing up. I kind of just say that like I tried everything once, like I did, I did track for, I think like two years, basketball for like two years, but then come like middle school, I like didn't do anything. Like mm. the last time I actually did like a sport was in like early middle school, I think. And so, you know, I was just kind of doing my own thing. I started like longboarding and skateboarding a lot. And then, um, then I did that for like two or three years. And then I found the gym my junior year of high school. And I just fell in love with it because it was like, it's your own sport. You know what I mean? I didn't have to be at a certain place at a certain time. I didn't have to have a team. Not that there's anything wrong with that. That would have been great. And I wish that I did sports for sure. Um, but you know, you can't go back. So um, I am glad though, that I did get into the gym as early as I did. So I was, I think the first time I like went to the gym, I was like 15, almost 16. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, I just went in there and I was like super serious. And then like, I fell in love, like the first time I went to the gym. So like the first time I went to the gym, I never, I never stopped. Like it was like my life from then. Um, mm -hmm. You know, so I just basically started going to the gym and I was just extremely committed to changing my body and gaining weight. Cause I was like super skinny, just genetically always was super skinny. Um, mm -hmm. And so like the first time I went to the gym, it was like, I think I went like 40 days in a row. And then I finally learned after like six months of working out that like I needed to rest to like yeah. actually gain muscle. Not that I was like overtraining too much, but I just loved it too much. Like I knew I needed rest days. So I would go and do like an active rest day, you know? Mm -hmm. um, but then I really started packing on a lot of muscle when I started eating a lot more and, um, you know, resting more. So, and then of course, lifting heavier and stuff, but I fell in love with it right away. So I, I'd say I started working out when I was like 16. And then when I turned around 17, I realized I wanted to be big. I wanted a lot of muscle because I just, I enjoyed the way that it looked. And mm -hmm. then, you know, by the time I was 18, I was like, okay, I would say that that's when like I started bodybuilding. And I know that you're a former competitor. Like, um, when did you start competing? So the first time I competed, so I can, the first time I competed, I was 19 and then I competed when I was 20 and then I competed when I was 21 as well. And now I'm 25. Um, so yeah, I kind of just jumped into like a show. Like obviously I prepped, I think I lost like 35 pounds in the prep. I went from wow. like 145 or I went from like one, yeah, like 140 to like one. 13 <laughs> I think and now wow. I weigh 160 <laughs> and I'm pretty lean so um and I remember that me weighing 145 before my first prep in 2018 I was like I was like thick thick like fat <laughs> so uh -huh. like fat compared to like you know bodybuilding standards and so you know something really cool is just looking at like the recomp like my heaviest weight in 20, like 19, I think was like the weight that I am now almost, or like a little bit heavier. And that body composition is completely different. Mm. Like, so that's probably the coolest thing about bodybuilding is just recomping your body. And how tall are you? I'm five, seven. So I was always five, six. And I always said I'm five, six, but I'm five, seven. So and, uh -huh. and something interesting is 
I, I've always measured five, six, but now I measure five, seven and I've been doing jujitsu for a year. And I honestly would not be surprised if me doing jujitsu, like opened me up enough to where I gained an extra inch. I, I guess not quite an inch, but maybe like a quarter of an inch or something or like a half. Wow. Really? You know? So now when people ask, I'm like getting used to saying five, seven. <laughs> wow. Is that, it like stretches you out somehow or how does, how does it do that? I would say, yeah, I would say just like bodybuilding is shown to like, I mean, I've never read studies, but I've just always heard that bodybuilding is eventually like it compresses you if you're not hmm. very, you know, flexible or stretching yeah. and you know, that makes sense. So, I mean, jujitsu is kind of like essentially like forced yoga sometimes. So, you know, you got to stay very flexible. And now I have like, a really good balance of like flexibility strength and so like I'm just always mobile now it's it's really nice nice that's very cool um now um what if you don't mind me saying like why did you stop competing um I don't know just I guess the competition is just like women's physique is just at a place right now where like it's so all over the place mm -hmm. um like and I, I don't know, I just, I don't really feel like putting, I don't really, uh, I guess it boils down really to supplementation. And mm. that's not something that I want to push so hard, um, yeah. just because I am still young. And, you know, I see what it does to a lot of women. And I know a lot of women are abusing stuff. Mm. And, you know, I just don't want to put that much stuff in my system, really. A lot mm. of, a lot, a lot of the reason being obviously health, but also like cosmetic reasons like I don't want to alter my face I'm 25 mm -hmm. so like what's going to happen in 20 years you know and and I feel like more people are starting to especially with the health thing because I know that like you know I mean I don't want to get like controversial I guess this isn't controversial because it's true but I know a lot of women like and just bodybuilders have just like died over the years like tons mm -hmm. just like I mean I'm sure we can all name like at least five off the top of our head like that who have died in the past like two years. And so, you know, just, it's just not something that I need to validate myself with, not saying that that's what people do, but like I train hard and I look pretty lean now year round. Like some people will say stuff to me, they're like, God, are you competing? And I'm like, no, like I'm not even close to stage comp like condition, but I'd prefer to just be like more athletic and in a healthier spot because I can stay pretty lean and feel like I'm looking good. And obviously I'm still training hard. Obviously I'm still dieting, you know, obviously I am still using some supplementation here and there, but I'm not pushing it as hard as I would have prep. And then I realized sure. with prepping three years in a row, being so young, being 19, 20, 21, having only worked out for a handful of years, like every prep, I was like losing some muscle. Mm -hmm. And since, since I've like, I mean, anyone who knows me, especially you, like you could see that, like, since the last time I competed, I mean, my legs have grown so much. Mm -hmm. And so that was kind of one thing I'm like, okay, I can't prep every year if I actually want to grow legs. Like I'm a person who's like a, I'm an ectomorph. So I'm like a skinny person naturally. So like, mm -hmm. if there's any chance that my legs want to lose muscle because they don't have the food or they're doing too much cardio, like that muscle is going to just not want to be there so I'm like if I stay at a like a healthy lean body composition like I can still like the way my legs look in terms of thickness and leanness but also still be eating enough at, you know to grow so mm, that's cool. I didn't that's want to good. lose my legs because I was losing them every prep like at the end of every prep my legs would like look like shit and that's my fault for pushing like the prep too hard like doing too much cardio eating too little of food um but like the last time I competed I looked awful like I looked so stringy on stage mm -hmm. I looked mm -hmm. like shit like I was so like depleted and so many people throw that word around but it's like anybody would could see my stage shots and be like eh. like my my shoulders weren't even like pumped and, mm -hmm. and, you know, I just always push a prep too hard because I want to do more cardio and I want to eat less. And so I'm just at the point where I'm like, I train hard year round. I diet year round, um, you know, and I, I look good year round instead of getting fat and then getting lean and then getting fat and then getting lean. So I think it's 
it's much more um, like longevity based. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. And you do look good year round too. I'm sure that's a lot healthier to, to be, to do it that way too. It just feels better because I'm not going through so many like ups and downs with my bodies or with my body, you know, and I'm doing cardio year round and I'm doing, you know, cardio and certain types of training for enjoyment. And, mm -hmm. you know, yeah, I'm probably not, I'm not, you know, if I was to get, you know, a little bit fatter and eat a little bit more food, yeah, I might gain a little bit more muscle, but with, with doing the work that I do, it's like, I'd rather look good and perform well year round, especially now with jujitsu. It's like, I'd rather just be a solid body composition. My car, my cardio is like phenomenal like my my cardio has never been you know where it's at now and that's that's a really good feeling mm, that's terrific that's really cool now um I was going to talk a little bit about your modeling and I know you've worked with some really great fitness photographers um I was thinking Sean Nelson comes to mind but I was wondering do you have a, a favorite that you've worked with Oof, I everyone's different you know so like for so someone who I really liked this past year to work with is Jay Rusevic. Um, mm. He's, he's fun. He's such a hoot. Love him. He's so funny, but um, he was great to work with. And he really allowed like my look to shine, not just by having muscle, but having the certain face that I do. Like he mm. does a lot of like, I guess like high fashion, like fine art modeling, which is something mm. I've always wanted to get into. And just mm -hmm. very like strong images that look like they should be in a magazine. Um, nice. So I love to work with him. The shoots that we did, we literally shot for probably 30 minutes total. And we got some of my favorite pictures ever. Um, and then another person that I always love to work with is Luis, who's out in Tampa. Um, he's oh, just he like, my like, he's just like one of my best friends. And I fly him out here to where I live actually at least once or twice a year and we work together and he stays at my house and everything. And he's so fun. We just, we, he's who I've shot with the most and we've done, we've done like every idea, you, you know, you can think of. And so I'm going to be shooting with him again, like, you know, next week or like a week and a half when I'm out there in Florida. So he's just, Perfect. he's always fun to work with and he's someone I highly recommend. Um, so I don't have a favorite, but everyone has, like different dimensions of like what they prefer or what maybe they're best at. And so, you know, I love to switch it up and I also love to work with new people. Yeah. Luis is really good. I remember he does some, some amazing um, photography and he seems like a good guy in general. Yeah. He's so great. He's just so fun and he's so professional, but he's so fun as well. And um, I think he's honestly taken <laughs> He's probably taken like 30,000 photos of me, if wow. not more. Yeah, he's taken a lot of pictures of me. I've shot he, he, I, I've shot with him, of course, more than I've shot with anybody else. But he's shot with me more than he shot with anybody else as well. So, okay. you know, oh, wow. he's, just, he's always a good time. So that's awesome. That's very cool. Now, I was curious, when did you start producing kind of adult content, you know, in terms of modeling and such? So I would say, I wouldn't say it all started with her biceps, but it kind of, you know, I, I started doing her biceps when I was 19. Um, but I guess prior to that, prior to before I started camming, I was already Skyping with a few select people that like I had met through Instagram. Mm -hmm. But on Instagram, I mean, people were hitting me up when I was like 18 and they like wanted to pay for my groceries and stuff. And so I'm like, oh my God, like what? You know, it's just crazy. And um, so I was like selling flexing videos and stuff like that. And then some people would be like, oh, like, would you do nude? And I'm like, I mean, I don't care. Like, so for a while I did that, but I just like didn't put my face in it. And then I realized that like, I enjoy doing that. Like, I don't have a problem with it. You know what I mean? It's like people are nude in movies. People are nude all the time. Like, you know, so I started my OnlyFans in 2019. So I started that in October of 2019. And, you know, but prior to OnlyFans, I was scamming a lot on her biceps and I was doing Skypes and I was selling content, you know, through random stuff like email and all that. Um, you know, but then I was like, okay, like, why not start an OnlyFans? So there's like an actual platform for people to come to. I'm doing this anyways. I enjoy it. It's morally acceptable to me. It's fun. 
Um, mm-hmm. You know, so then I started my OnlyFans and then, you know, I never, ever looked back. And that's been one of the most, like, dominating aspects of my everyday life since the day I started. You know, it's it's an everyday 24-hour thing, you know, where I'm constantly leveling up, getting new content, messaging people, scheduling stuff. So, um, you know, I've been on, on that for a while. I was definitely one of the first first handfuls of, of female bodybuilders on OnlyFans. And so now, now everybody's on there, but you know. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah. And it's probably been, I mean, I imagine pretty financially lucrative for you because you're, I think you're one of the top models on OnlyFans, at least the, the, the muscle ladies. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. That's terrific. Um, now, do you have a preferred platform or I know, you know, of course we talked about OnlyFans being very popular. So I like OnlyFans, of course, just because it's the <laughs> most popular and it will always generate the most revenue for me. Mm-hmm. Um, but I also really enjoy things like loyal fans and fansly because they do allow some things that are a bit more taboo or fetish mm-hmm. that OnlyFans doesn't allow. So I would say that that's my only problem with OnlyFans is um, just the rules which I understand why a lot of the rules are in place, such as like meeting up and all that type of stuff, because they don't want to be liable for certain things if anything Mm -hmm. happens to anybody. Um, But some of the things that they restrict, I don't necessarily agree with. So like, I wish that they were a bit more open-minded in that aspect. So I, Mm -hmm. I wish that they were more accepting of people with more taboo fetishes or like interests, even though some of them aren't even that taboo. I mean, like, everybody, you know, the a, a large majority, a large percentage of my fans would be interested in some of the things that aren't allowed on there. Um, but obviously, mm-hmm. I respect the rules. And you know, I, I have to follow them. I have no choice. So, um, yeah. you know, but I, I do love loyal fans, because it has a video shop. Um, oh, so it yeah. actually has oh, a I feature see. where people can go in and look through your video shop and check out by themselves, which I understand people People do love the personable aspect of OnlyFans, which Loyal Fans has that as well. It just has this video shop feature on top of it. Mm -hmm. Um, But it also makes it easy for someone to browse on their own and not wait for a response, not, you know, they get to see everything in one place and then maybe Mm -hmm. base their decisions off of that instead of just what they see that was sent or whatever. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of similar to, I think her biceps cam has a, a video rental section so it's kind of like that i have a lot of yeah. videos in there too. <laughs> uh-huh I, I yeah, that's a, video. yeah that's awesome and that's yeah. a good way to kind of make some passive income too which is kind of nice oh, totally. you know? yeah, yeah and then it gets people like oh wow she does this or she does that you know what i mean and then they can get a better idea of some of the content you create and you know stuff like that so i have a I don't know anybody who has as many websites as me. So uh-huh. <laughs> honestly, if someone finds somebody like, please show them to me. Cause I want to be friends with them. So <laughs> that's very cool. Yeah. I think, are they, you're in their, your link tree, I think, right. You have all of them in there. Yes. Yeah, so I have my URL, which is actually like my name on the zoom right there. So my URL has all my links. Oh yeah. Okay. I'll make sure to include it down in the, the comment section too okay. for fans. Yeah. 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 Now I was curious if you ever had to deal with like kind of overzealous fans. I mean, there's there was a a, a incident in Columbus where um, a few ladies were actually stalked and an intruder got in their Airbnb and like oh, stood geez. over one of the ladies and it was like yeah really scary. I think you know at the this was at I think they were followed from the Arnold. But have you ever had to deal with any crazy That's fans cool. like that? I haven't. I mean, I've had. I I wouldn't say I'd ever had any. I'm very careful about things, um, you know, like like a very, very small percentage of people, which, you know, obviously don't say where I live in this video, but it's like, you know where I live and I live mm-hmm. in a really random place. <laughs> no one would ever guess where I live. I love it. Um, and yeah. I purposely kind of do that because I used to live in Tampa and I was always paranoid because I used to live right by my gym. And I was scared. And my family was like, because that was really my mom's main concern with like doing what I do. Like, of course, at first she was like, oh my God, like you're doing this. But now she understands it is a business. There are tons of women doing it. This is a new phenomenon. Like OnlyFans is like a new phenomenon. Like 
the world is changing. Like mm -hmm. it's not, it's not what it used to be. You know what I mean? So it's a new thing and people can think or judge what they want. But you know, if you have an accepting circle around you, they're gonna, they're gonna accept what you do and they're gonna love you for who you are. You know what I mean? It, it, mm -hmm. Like, of course I'm safe with it. And you know, I make the proper decisions and it's a business. And if anyone doesn't argue it's a business, then they've never had a business and they never will, you know? So, yeah. um, mm -hmm. you know, safety is always extremely important to me. So I just really stay low key where I live. I see girls who constantly check into their city, their gym, and I'm just like, oh, that, that freaks me out. I mean, it, it's an unlikely thing and, but you never know. And I don't trust people. So I'm, I'm very low key everywhere that I check in on Instagram. I don't live there. Like, you know, yeah. so mm -hmm. people are always like, oh, like, do you live? And I've lived all over. I've lived in Chicago. I've lived in Atlanta. I've lived in Florida. I've lived in Michigan. So I have lived in all these places. I don't anymore, mm -hmm. but you know, I will check in places that I don't live. So a lot of people think I live in Texas because I have a lot of check-ins there. And mm -hmm. it's like, no, I don't. And then when people ask me where I live, I'm just like, I'm sorry. Like, but I'm just, I don't need to share that. Like my time zone is enough. Like, you know, I'm sorry, but like, I just have no reason to really share it. Like, you know, so I'm always careful and I'm always, you know, always want to ensure that other, other women are careful regardless to if you're, you know, cause I know girls in the gym can get stalkers, you know, anybody can get stalkers, um, mm -hmm. you know, but obviously yeah, people with a, a, a hefty fan base may be more likely, who knows? Um, yeah, so true. I'm always, careful. I've never dealt with a stalker or anything like that. And if I did, they better not try me. <laughs> yeah, you'd probably kick their ass too, you know, so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, that's cool. Yeah, I totally understand. I think that's really smart for you to do that. I mean, you always, you just seem like a really wise person, even though you're kind of young, um, but you. you're just kind of think things through like that, which is smart. I yeah. Think. yeah. Yeah. It triggers me. Like when I see a lot of girls, like just check in in their location, like I only, ch I only post like places like I usually discuss like travel plans, like after the fact, almost mm, yeah. like very rarely will I actually check in somewhere when I'm actively there, just because mm. there's no, you never know. Someone can be unhinged and they can be around the block and they'll be like, Oh my God, this girl's right here. No way. You know mm. what I mean? And who knows, you know? And so it's best to just stay safe because at the end of the day, it doesn't hurt you to like, not check into a certain location at a certain time so mm -hmm. be careful ladies because <laughs> i think a lot of women just might wait until they hear a horror story whereas with me i'm like i don't want to hear or be a horror story so mm -hmm. you know plus That's i good. like to be a little um what's the word like mysterious <laughs> sure <laughs> i people, understand that yeah people will be like oh you live in florida right and i'm like no and they're like so where do you live and i'm like no <laughs> uh -uh. <So. laughs> i think that's smart you're very smart to do that and you're i guess you maybe you are unusual for a young person on instagram you know to not mention that because i i think about my own kid you know and just constantly on instagram and constantly posting yeah. you know, so even my yeah. parents check into their like location and yeah. um you know, and facebook and i'm like ah like it just triggers me to check in your location in real time yeah you know especially being a woman not trying to bring gender into this but you know like anybody you know like checking into their live location it's like you never know who's watching you you know even a girl on facebook it's like who knows you know i'm sure there's plenty of instances where she checked into a restaurant and then here comes this psycho, like, you know, so it's mm -hmm. always good to stay safe or just wait and put it as a draft. And then when you leave, post it, no one's going to yeah. call you out and be like, you're not there right now. You know what I mean? So, <laughs> yeah, I <I'd> agree. <laughs> no, I think that's really smart. And that's, I think that's good advice, you know, for people watching this too. So, yeah. um, I'm going to skip ahead a little bit. Um, I was thinking, uh, when you've collaborated with some, you know, some really great ladies. So, I was wondering if you have a favorite collaborator that you like to work with. Um, I don't really have a favorite because everyone's different, just like photographers. Um, someone, I guess, who I've spent the most time with. I spent the most time with Nancy Jones, a.k.a. Mistress Muscle, and mm -hmm. Goddess Sydney Thunder. Those are just who I spent the most time with, and as well as Hannah. Um, 
I spent the most oh. time with them just because like we stayed together. Like I stayed yeah. at their house or they stayed at mine. Um, okay. But I also yeah. have met like Ariel X and Brandy May. Um, I've met Skylar, Skylar Renee. I've met who else? I really enjoyed hanging out with Sheena. Um, and I'm mm -hmm. about to see her again soon. So she was really fun to work with. Um, just a ton of girls and I have a lot of girls planned for this year too so it's fun to meet girls who because up until like a year ago I never really met any OnlyFans girls so it's kind of mm -hmm. just nice to you know you know they understand things that you know maybe other people don't so so it's nice and, and the fans love it too so you know business great business for sure great business like marketing and you know collaboration and all that um but then also we have fun too and we kind of laugh about certain things and we can discuss different things give each other tips on different things so yeah that's a great idea i think it's really good especially because um with only fans being like a, a bodybuilder that's almost kind of niche within only fans you know what i mean it's like there's a For lot of sure, yeah ladies that aren't Definitely. really muscle ladies on there. So yeah, I, I think that that makes sense. Um, yeah, you and I get... also collaborate. I also okay. collaborate with like some non, non muscular women as well. And I think that that's totally fine. At first I was kind of just looking for like Jack women, but uh -huh. you know, it's also fun to, even if they're not muscular, you know, it, it sometimes can make, make plots more fun if they're small and skinny, you know, so <laughs> Yeah, you know, lots, of, lots of ideas there. So it, it's so worth it. Like if if it's convenient, it's like I'll collaborate with anybody who has a name for themselves, no matter who they are or what they look like, as long as they've done some work and they have a name for themselves and we can help each other, then it's like I'm down. That makes sense. I think that's good. And you can kind of promote each other's OnlyFans page too, you know, to try yeah. to pick up subscribers and stuff. So that's, sure. yeah, that's smart. I think that's good. Um, now you'd mentioned on George Page's, um, uh, podcast that you did a few weeks ago, I believe that your family was at first skeptical about, you know, you doing the adult content, but they've kind of come to accept it over time. But I was wondering when you first started doing that, did you kind of keep it secret to, from them or how did you do that? <laughs> um, they, they like saw, they like, they, so they knew I was like, my mom and like brother knew that I was like camming on her biceps. And like, of course, they thought that that was like weird at first, mm -hmm. um, you know, or like alarming. But then like over time of me doing it more and like selling custom videos or like, you know, this and that, they realized that I'm going to do what I want anyways, first off. So, you know, it is what it is. And, you know, it's not like I'm giving these people my address because they were mostly concerned with my safety. They just kind of were like, what? Which... Which, you know, that just goes to show that, like, people who care about you and are in your inner circle, like, they, that's the first thing they should be concerned about, you know. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And so that was the first thing. And then, you know, obviously, I just kept with it. And then I started in my OnlyFans. And then they never, it was just something that was, like, spoke about, but never, like, asked specific, like, explicit questions, you know, but um, just maybe, like, assumptions, and then mm -hmm. it just kind of came out fully that it's like, yep, I do it all, you know, but in, you know, and at first my mom was like, just concerned that I like, wouldn't be able to get like a better job eventually whenever I graduate, which I've graduated, mm -hmm. but now she, uh, come like two and a half years ago, she realized like, this is a business. This is like a legit forever business because there's so many avenues for content creators and bodybuilders to do a plethora of things you know what I mean and none of that is ever going to go away there's always so many different avenues there's plenty of avenues that I don't even do such as se sessions you know and you know I've never really done sessions but you know it's like hey if everything else goes under it's like sure or her biceps cam has been around since 2005 it's like everything's promising because people want to say like oh well what happens when only fans goes under and it's like this, 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 it's like, I have plenty of options, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And, yeah. you know, when you conduct it as a business, it's like you have people who will follow you anywhere, no matter what, like I have plenty of people that, you know, if all platforms went away right now, people would still email me, people would still hit me up through other ways. 
you mm-hmm. know, so it's like you get a fan base and, you know, you provide content for them that they enjoy and, you know, boom, you have lifelong friends basically. Um, mm-hmm. So yeah, at first they were like skeptical or maybe like judgmental, um, but then they just kind of accepted it and they realized it's a business. Like, you know, they realize I get hundreds of messages per day that I respond to personally. It's like, you know, it's is and it's marketing and it's collaborating it's traveling it's filming it's editing it's you know discussing ideas and making deals with people essentially for like custom videos and you know so it's a legit business um and they've realized that over the years so they respect Mm -hmm. they respect the hell out of it and know that i work hard and that's a good feeling that's great yeah that was something i was curious about when i saw the podcast with george was how your family felt, but I think that's great that they're, they're accepting and and they see that you're doing well as in it as a business, you know? So. Yeah. yeah. They're super supportive. You know, it's like, you know, maybe certain connotations with it. Like, Oh, what do other people think? Cause sometimes my mom will be like, Oh my God, like my friend from high school follows you on Instagram or something like that. And I'm just like, (laughs) I don't know. (laughs) They would have unfollowed me if they didn't like what they saw anymore. So, (laughs) you know, and it's just something that her and I kind of laugh about, you know, or, you know, or like people that like my brother went to high school with, like follow me on OnlyFans and like message me and like, you know, it's like, hey, I mean, they can judge me, but like ultimately they're enjoying what they're seeing. So like, you know, I don't know what to tell them, you know, so it is what it is and I don't force anything upon anyone. So that's terrific. No, I think that's good. I only have like two minutes left. So I wanted to ask you before we end about the jujitsu, how did you get involved with jujitsu? So I was boxing. So I learned, so I'll try to make this as quick as possible. We have like a minute and a half. Um, Yeah. (laughs) I actually learned, I, so, you know, obviously I was bodybuilding, doing my thing, school, work, everything. And I was like, okay, I need a hobby. And I had always like boxed on and off over the years, but I would always like stop and then come back and then like do it free time a little bit just because it was like affecting my strength and like my shoulders. Um, so I ended up long story short, I got my motorcycle license and I started riding a motorcycle and I was like, okay, cool. This is fun. But then I got a little too paranoid and I was like, okay, I'd rather not risk like hurting myself or dying. Um, you know, so I was like, okay, I'm going to go back to boxing. So I went back to boxing box for like a month or two. And then my boxing coach was like, okay, let's grapple. And I was like, okay. And then we did. And like, right away, he just he just felt like how easy it was for me, like not easy, but like what a natural I was compared to boxing, you know, Hmm. just boxing. I'm not like the most fluid. I mean, I'm not like terrible, but like jujitsu just took my heart just like bodybuilding did right away. So I've been doing jujitsu for like 16 months now and I got my blue belt in January. Um, So I put in a lot of hours. I mean, that's quite fast to get a blue belt. Typically it takes, and it usually takes like six months to two years to get a blue belt. And I got mine in a year. Um, wow. But I put in so many hours in 2023. So I love wow, it. Wow, that's and really thing. That's so cool. I think Zoom's going to kick us off here in a minute. I'm going to get this posted yeah. soon, but so good to see you. Thank okay. you so much. Thank you. Yeah. Pleasure to seeing you. And, and um, yeah, I'll get this posted and tag.